Hi, and welcome to the 10th video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. In the last video, we actually had our first look at if statements. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at if statements one last time, uh, but we're going to be taking a look at nested if statements and also just slightly more advanced uh, if statements. So let's actually go ahead and let's get started today on a little bit more of a properly like real life example. Uh, so we're going to be looking at um, user detection. So it's not going to be quite user login, um, but we're going to be putting in our username and it's going to be telling us if the username exists or not. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do um, is we are going to prompt the user for the uh, username here. So we're just going to do a console dot right line. And we're going to say, please enter your username and then what we're going to do is we're going to store that username in a string called username and we're going to call the console dot read line open and close parentheses all right and then what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing if the username is not equal to or actually let's just let's start off with this let's say if the username is equal to uh test we are in here else we are in here so we've already seen this example in the last video so here we're going to say console dot right line um welcome and let's go ahead and let's interpolate some variables here. So let's add the dollar sign in front of the double quotations. And in the else statement, we are going to say console.writeLine. And we are just going to say, again, an interpolated string. And we are going to say um, username and then put in the username that they entered uh, was not bound. Uh, so we've seen this example before. Uh, this is what we did in the last video. Uh, it was just a different example in the last video. So if we go ahead and we run this here, we are going to see if we put in test, we get welcome test. If we put anything other than test, uh, like if I put uh, Jack here, uh, we get username Jack was not found. Perfect. But now, we might actually have a situation where we want to first check if the if the user even inserted um, a user altogether. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say if username is not equal to an empty string. And then what we're going to put here in the else statement is we're going to say uh, no usernames entered uh, and then just exiting. All right, and then in here, we are now going to say, so if the username is not blank, so this will basically accept any username at this point, we wanna make sure that the username is actually found. So we're gonna say if username equal equals test else. So here, if the username is test, we are gonna say console dot right line, and here, once again, we're gonna do our interpolated string and we're just gonna say welcome. And we're just gonna pass in the username here. And then if it's not test, what we're gonna say is we're gonna say console.writeLine uh, interpolated string once again, uh, username uh, with the username that they entered was not found. All right, so here is our nest nested string. So uh, our nested if statement. So we have an if statement up above here, and we also have an if statement here. So this would actually cause us to be nested. Now, you can actually go once again and add another if statement and add keep nesting these if statements. Now, of course, there are situations where you're not going to want to have 
uh, a dozen nested if statements. It becomes very, very hard to read and very, very hard to follow along in the code. So this is kind of where we bring maybe some more advanced, um, the more advanced if statements. And what I mean by more advanced if statements is just combining different conditions. Now we've already seen uh, conditional statements and we've seen that we do have some logical operators uh, like the ands and the ors. So let's actually go ahead and let's use these to shrink this example down a little bit more. So we're going to say if the username is not empty and the username is equal to test, we are going to then just say console dot right line welcome username um no usernames uh no user found for username entered and we're just going to do exiting so this one kind of goes back to our standard just if else statement but is really just to emphasize that Nesting a bunch of ifs might not be the best solution. It's really to find that best combination of nested if statements and then also just combining the different um, conditions that you have in your if statements in general. Uh, you can have uh, combined if statements underneath. So if we just actually go back to our previous example here. So if if we have as long as they entered a username we can say if the username equals test or username is equal to admin so if we run this here we can actually see that if we enter admin it works if we enter test it works as well and if we enter uh, jacked here uh, we get that it wasn't found. And then if we simply just leave it empty, we get no usernames entered, exiting. So that is perfect. Now this is the or, we can actually also test the and. So let's say in our program, we actually had a flag. So we know how to create flags, which are basically Booleans. Uh, so we are gonna create a Boolean and we're gonna say is um, fraud, and we're gonna set that equal to true for now. So here we have our uh, if test or username is equal to admin. So let's actually wrap this together. And what we're then going to do is we're gonna do an or, um, actually, we're sorry, we're gonna do an and is prod. Uh, username is found and is prod. Found. And then here, we're going to actually change this in just a second here. So what we're going to do is in the else is if uh, not is prod. So here we've seen this before, the not operator. Uh, so this will just negate anything. So this is basically going to say if... Um, prod is false, then let's do a console dot right line. Um, and we're just going to say uh, login uh, not active because we are not in production. And then we're going to say else. And we're just going to put this console dot right line where the username was not found. So Let's actually check this out. So here we have quite a few nested options. We also have some combined um, if statements. So let's actually go ahead and let's run this. So let's put, since the is prod is set to true, let's go ahead and let's put in admin. Uh, we get welcome admin, which is what we would expect. Now let's go ahead and let's put in uh, jacked here. We get Jack was not found, which is again, what we would expect. Now let's actually change this to false. And now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put admin 
and we're going to get login is not active. And if we put in Jack, we get login is not active. Now, why are we getting login not active? Now, this is where we have to follow along. So we know that we put in a username. Our username um, was actually not test or admin either, but in one example, it was, it was admin. So this was set to true. So this section was true, but then it got and with a false value of is prod. So it goes into that else statement. And then we go right ahead into checking um, if the production is false or not. And if it's false, we say that the login is not active. We don't even check to see if the username wasn't found. We know right away that it just wasn't active. Now, in theory, we could probably do the check for is prod somewhere else to make it a little bit more efficient. And this is where uh, with the nested if statements and if statements in general, you're gonna wanna find the best layout so it makes the most sense and you're not um, just making if statements for no reason or making them a little bit more complicated to read. Um, you're definitely going to want to go with the easiest route possible with the if statements. So what I would probably do in this case with the is prod is I would probably put um, this is prod right at the top. We know that if if the production is turned off and we're not letting people log in, do that check first because we're, we don't really necessarily want to check if the username is even equal to anything. So here I would probably put this at the top here. I would say if is fraud and then I would wrap this entire statement here and then else and then I would just put login not active here. I would erase all of these. I would erase this here. And then we could minimize this. So here again, we, we now have three nested if statements, um, but we got rid of this a little bit more complex if statement because in reality, if this isn't in production, we shouldn't even have to go into further down the checks. Uh, because we already know that the login is not active. So it'll really depend on your conditions and the different statements that you have on how complex you want to make the nested if statements. So I hope that kind of made sense. I know that it's a little bit much to take in all at once. If it's your first time seeing if statements and nested if statements, just know that you can put multiple if statements together. Uh, you can also nest them within each other. Uh, just always be weary on how many you're putting in because it could get very, very hard to read and very hard to follow eventually. Uh, so just always take that into consideration. Another thing that I wanted to slightly cover in this video is going to be the string matching uh, since we are comparing strings. So a lot of the times this equal equal will definitely be sufficient to compare strings there might be a time where you're getting unexpected issues, especially once we're working with a graphical user interface, we might actually want to use the dot equals on the string. So here we just say dot equals test. Um, and then here we would also just do a dot equals admin. Now, the main difference between the two is just be, be wary of this is the double equal sign will do a reference check, whereas the dot equals will actually do a string comparison. Um, this will be useful if you're comparing an object that is not necessarily a string, but contains a string. Uh, and then you're also comparing that to a string. It'll take just the two strings of, it'll take the string of the object and your string and be able to compare them to see if they are equal and not actually do a comparison of objects. Uh, so this could be super useful, especially if you're working with list boxes and you have the different items and you wanna compare the item that was selected uh, to a string, that item selected is not actually a string, it is gonna be a list box item. Uh, so that is really just a, a little tidbit here that might be useful uh, later on 
I will probably make a video on just the dot equals and the equal equal sign uh, once we actually see examples of that in our code. Uh, so I hope that is all clear for you guys. So in the next video, we're going to be taking a look at switch statements, uh, which is just an, another way instead of if statements to do some conditional checks. So be sure to check that out when that comes out as well. If you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know down below in the comment section. I will try to answer you guys as fast as possible. And if I think that a lot of people can benefit, I will definitely be making a video on that. And also please be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.